the reason for that is that phosphorus, bone meal is very rich in phosphorus, and phosphorus is easily stolen. <laughs> it's easily grabbed by the clay particles of the soil. So I want to reduce as much as I can the interaction between the bone meal and the clay particles. Forget about sustainability. You want to enrich ecosystems. Every bean is equipped to live a positive energetic balance. Keep it pruned. We are cultivating abundance. Not a problem to cut down trees. The problem is not planting them. What is up, YouTube? Welcome to the Agroforce Academy channel. Today, I want to show you the plot that we've just implemented uh, 10 days ago in the 11th Agroforce course that happened here in the farm. I'm based at a farm called Reservado Cajuzeira in the town of Lençóis, Bahia. Um, so the system looks pretty good, pretty nice. I did, as you know, uh, as you probably know, if you if you've been following us for a while, my main crops here in my systems are pineapple and bananas. Um, so you can see there's lots of pineapples planted, and you know that I use a lot of prickly pear as well. You can see the prickly pear is planted here. And I decided to change the design of my system a little bit. And I'm going to show to you what has changed. And of course, I'm going to show to you all the little things that are already sprouting. And this is going to be pretty nice. So let's switch the camera. Um, if you look at the other systems that I've planted, and you can check you know, many other videos, I was planting uh, in beds that were uh, one meter, I mean, they were 80 centimeters wide. And then I had pineapple in the central, in the center of the bed, and then I had the prickly pear on the edges of the bed. What I did now is I made the beds narrower, they're thinner, so I made them at like 50 to 60 centimeters. And instead of having a bed, then 40, an 80 centimeters bed, 40 centimeters of path, and then another 80 centimeters bed. I just have the 60 centimeters bed, a very narrow path, you know, that's pretty much on top of the bed, and then another very narrow bed, and then I, I, I put the prickly pear in between the rows of pineapple instead of having it really close to the pineapple. The reason for that is that I found that the prickly pear was just overshading the pineapple too much and it would be way too much work to to keep it pruned. And interestingly enough, by doing this, I actually increased the number of prickly pear per hectare. Uh, in the other system, I was having um, in the other system, I had about 48 to 50,000 prickly pear plants per hectare, and over here I have 80,000 plants per hectare, and I maintain the same number of pineapples. So it was a gain, 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 gain everywhere. I just really had to, to change a little bit the way of planting. And it just made a huge difference. I'm really happy about the result. It's easier to plant. So I'm really excited uh, about, you know, to see the development of this plot. I think the prickly pear is going to develop a lot better. It's going to produce a lot more organic matter. And yeah. Um, last, a couple of weeks ago, I made a video about soil preparation. I was talking specifically about the preparation of this soil here. Uh, here's a link, you know, a card to that video if you want to check it out. I used, let me, let me go back to the camera here. I used um, manure, about 100 uh, cubic meter, meters per hectare, plus some, some lime, 
which were uh, we used about three three tons per hectare, and the bone meal was used at a rate of was applied at a rate of about 1.5 tons per hectare. The manure and the lime were incorporated in the soil with a motor tiller, but the bone meal, I just spread it on top of the soil on the furrow. So just a small strip of bone meal. The reason for that is that phosphorus, bone meal is very rich in phosphorus and phosphorus is easily stolen. <laughs> it's easily grabbed by the clay particles of the soil. So I want to reduce as much as I can the interaction between the bone meal and the clay particles of the soil. So by apply, applying it on the surface, uh, phosphorus doesn't move uh, very fast through the soil profile, but I'm creating a very rich spot, like a hot spot of phosphorus on the surface of the soil. And since my soil is very well covered, uh, my plants are gonna send roots and produce roots and have roots on the surface of the soil. So they will uh, have access to that phosphorus. And then after that, of course, we planted all the pineapple slits and the prickly pear clad odds. And then we covered everything nicely. It's not as well covered as I would hope, as I would want to be, but you know, usually during the course, um, you know, people haven't really gotten the idea of how much organic matter is enough. So you can see that there are some parts which are um, left uncovered. I'm gonna, you know, come back afterwards and fix it. But of course we planted lots of placenta plants. Let me give you a show. Uh, such as beans, jack beans, pigeon peas. So these will quickly cover the soil that's left. And you can see they're already sprouting. You know, very quickly they're going to be uh, producing that nice green mat that we like to see covering the soil. We actually want to have the soil covered with organic matter and we want to have the organic matter covered with living plants. That's the ideal situation. So yeah, this is pretty nice. 800 prickly pears planted, about 250 pineapples, uh, 18 banana plants, and then lots of popcorn, pigeon pea, jack beans, and other groovy stuff. Um, so that's it. I'm going to keep you updated. Probably in about uh, 30 days, I'm going to bring in an, another update in the system. The beans will already be pretty big. Uh, I expect no weeding needed here. You can see that everything is sprouting, but there's there are no weeds sprouting uh, whatsoever. And many trees will already have sprouted. We already have some moringa trees showing up here. As you can see right here, there's a little moringa tree. This is a, a yellow acacia, Senna siamea, that we planted by. We, I had some seedlings. So it's going to be pretty beautiful system and we're continuing right over there you can see another area being implemented right now and so yeah uh, if you guys are in our patron community we're gonna be sh I'm gonna be sharing the sketch of the system and you know all the systematization of the operations done the amount of fertilizers used and everything the expected production so that's it. And let me take the opportunity, if you do not know about our Patreon community, um, Patreon is a platform that allows fans to support creators. Uh, so you can support us for as little as $7.90. You will get access to lots of exclusive features like exclusive content that we're sharing as complementary material to our videos. You'll be able to participate in our Q&As. You'll have access to our Discord group and and you'll be supporting the channel so that we can keep on bringing amazing and awesome agroforestry content free to the world. So thank you for watching. I've got some, uh, some seeds that I just collected on the way to the farm. 
um, in the forest. I'm going to be planting them in this system. This is a, a legume called, well, in Portuguese, it's called banha de galinha, which means literally chicken fat. So I'm going to be putting these in the soil so that they sprout. Um, so thanks a lot for watching. I'm Felipe for the Agroforestry Academy, and I'm signing out.